Alright, welcome back to Forza Horizon 4, and we are in winter now. Welcome to the winter season. We need just under 27,000 before we can get started on the next showcase event. Unfortunately, we got put back to our house. Uh, I was at the festival site, but we can check out another beauty spot, Derwent Water, which is uh, a little bit frozen over at the moment. Beautiful spot. One of my favourites. I've camped on the bank so many times, I think even the fish are sick of me. I love that I'm just like shin deep in snow because I expect you to see it in summer. So there's no events near us and we want to kickstart the cross country season. Let's just drive our way there and we'll rack up a bit of skill points on our way. As a bit of a reminder, this season, well <laughs> this month rather, is the last chance to get any festival playlist achievements for this game. They are doing away with that system as they start to roll back support for the game. I mean it is like five six years old as a title so it's not surprising. People have had plenty of time and they've given plenty of warning as well. Like it's not going to be delisted until December. They haven't specified when it might then no longer have server support. We'll wait and see when, if that might happen. I'm fairly sure people still play like FH3 if they managed to pick that up before it similarly got delisted. My key point and focus for this month is because I like to have achievements. <laughs> so I want to be able to get the playlist achievements, ideally. The, the hardest one is getting 100% across the entire series. Now the series started yesterday, oops, series started yesterday. That means that tomorrow is when I have to be able to start it to be able to get the first daily challenge out of the way, otherwise it will expire. So I'm on the clock. So we do get to select a free cross-country vehicle, which is good. I'm not sure. Right, well I might be wrong, but I have a feeling that maybe the bug is the most expensive in the auto show if I was to need to buy it later, so let's go with that. Because the Range Rover is probably a bit easier. Also the like bugs category, there's more limited options, whereas there's a lot of options in the same car category as the Range Rover or the Ram. I really don't particularly like these cross-country races. I think they're just a bit too chaotic and haphazard. They're just blasting through everyone's backyard. Uh, and then you do these jumps that throw you offline, and it's really annoying. Never mind. Just gotta hold it together. It's also one of the few racing categories that I prefer to race in third person. Normally I prefer to actually be in the cab. Unable to connect to the game server at that time. I don't care. I'm racing solo. Well, we're just going to have an annoying banner up the top for a little while, I guess. Until you qualify for the all of the seasons, I'm fairly sure that you can't play alongside everyone else anyway. Whoop, that was interesting. Oh, that killed my combo and I had so many skill points banked or earned. That's annoying and I just didn't get to bank them. Yeah, see, that's where the cross-country race is really annoying. You cut across a road, so I just thought that I needed to follow the road. <laughs> I'm fairly pleased, though, that I'm managing to stay in touch, despite literally rolling it <laughs> at one point. I don't know whether or not the difficulty is forcibly lowered for these opening stages or not. If it's still the highly skilled, then I don't know. I feel like I'm getting away with it here. I've just got to keep it okay through these sections. The problem with being in the lead in a cross-country race is you keep crashing into everything first, which slows you down. But we stayed ahead for long enough. There we go. Ah, barn finds. Here we go. I mean, statistically, there's a decent chance there's a classic car in it, right? Yeah. Uh, you wouldn't normally think so, but sure, in this world, maybe. <laughs> the barn finds are just another way to get some unique cars to drive. Oh, there is a fast travel board down here in the tunnel. 
Ah, so I've got to drop down onto the top of the carriage here, it seems. So let's just... Oh, and we missed. Okay, well, we can rewind that. <laughs> Get a little bit more visibility on where I'm going. Okay, now hop and crunch. There we go. That's the important thing. And <laughs> we're just upside down <laughs> like a cockroach on the top of a train carriage. Fantastic. Right, where were we? <laughs> let's go find that vehicle in a barn. And probably get distracted by other bonus boards along the way. Oops, see, there we go. 3k more influence. That helps. Because we're trying to hit our milestones as fast as we can. And there's one underneath the bridge. That one might even only be accessible in winter, while the river is at a lower point. Alright, so as you can see, we're in the zone for the barn discovery. But we're not sure exactly where it is, but this is where I believe we engage our drone mode. So you get the drone unlocked from your first house that just gets given to you. And you use this to scout out where the barns might be. So you can kind of do a bit of a perimeter around here. I'm fairly confident that it's not over this side. It's not the greatest height above ground ever. You can kind of tilt it, but you can't really go up very high. It does let you find other things though, like we now know that there is a fast travel board up here, for example. So that's handy. We can't break it with the drone, unfortunately. <laughs> that would be a bit too overpowered. You've still got to actually go find these things. Now, is there a barn on top of this mountain? I don't think so. Ah, oh, yeah, here it is. Sure enough. Now we've got to drive our way to where our drone was. So first we can pick up this fast travel board. So three out of 50. We've got a long way to go on that. But that's now dropped our fast travel cost to 9,400, I think. Something like that. It starts off at 10,000 and I think it's 200 off each one. And now here is the barn. Whoa, check it out. Escort RS Turbo. Nice. Some 17-year-old boy loved this thing to death. Probably before I was even born. Let's get it back to the garage. So that now takes a little while uh, in game time. So now we're going to go back over to where our previous showcase was. Now the useful thing here is we can also pick up some of the influence points or influence boards that we discovered by doing that hovercraft race. So we learned that there is an influence board down here, for example. It didn't show up when we were racing. But the handy thing about doing the races and just exploring the roads is then the board locations do show up for you later. Now we're just going to overshoot this a little bit. Because I have a feeling that there's like an influence board around here somewhere. Ah, fast travel board. Well, both actually. Here we go. So influence board down here. And then let's discover this other bit of this back road here as well. And then, how do we get up to where the fast travel board is? I think we might have to do a little hop onto the tracks. Maybe? Probably not the right car to be doing this in. No, I can't get enough elevation. Okay. We'll have to leave that for another time. Or come at it from the opposite side, I suspect. For now, there's the train. And now's the showcase. So we get... An atom, I suspect, and we're racing the Flying Scotsman, because of course. <laughs> so much like the hovercraft race, this is fairly scripted. The train will go super fast at some points just to make sure it's in the right place at the right time for various cutscene moments, and it will take its time in others. We have just got to hold our performance to a reasonable level not spin out too much smack into any walls too badly and we go zooming up and into the tunnel so here's where we are meant to be matching pace with the train so oh it suddenly slowed down wow even though i'm fairly sure that train could not go 180 190 k's an hour in the first place not sure what the top speed of steam trains was. Okay, we've spun out. That's not good. This is 
honestly not a great vehicle for doing this in. Where's my bug? <laughs> that felt more stable. Never mind. We'll see how well scripted this is and how close this ends up being despite me doing a terrible job of that bit through there. Well, hold it together so we don't disappoint the crowd at least. The engineer has probably been given race orders to slow down <laughs> because we've got to get this little pass by here. I'm fairly sure that at some point we'll be jumping over it. It is a showcase after all. And sure enough, here we go. Gotta get the shot. <laughs> Through the smoke. Fantastic. Out of the way, dear. Came in like a wrecking ball. Yeah, and you can see it just shooting off so much faster than it should. <laughs> like, we were overtaking it easily before when we were doing this sort of speed. Now it starts to slow down, sounds like. Shrieking. We have got to slow down because for some reason the road does this instead of just allowing us to keep going on the other side of the tracks, but whatever. <laughs> we could have had another jump there and jumped down onto this road instead. It goes into the tunnel, we go up and over. Now, notice the position of the dot of the train on the map. It entered that tunnel way before we came up here. Ground quakes. The ground quakes. It's way ahead of us. And then we take this jump here. Uh, we also almost screw it up. And do we actually lose? I think I finished second. Yes, I managed to lose. Fantastic. Not a problem. We've got it rigged so we can turn the train around and run it again. Yeah. Don't ask how. It was a nightmare. <laughs> Fantastic. You get a special voice slide when you come second. So now we're in the middle of Edinburgh, and as you can see, we've now discovered a few more influence boards along the way of the route that we took in order to get here while we were racing the train including one inside the tunnel, I believe. We'll try and retrace our steps back to the fast travel board. Follow this along. That influence board's probably under another bridge. No, it's right there. Okay. <laughs> sure. Oh, there's another fast travel board over here. In this shed, I think. There it is. Four fast travel boards. Excellent. There we go, so that's our barn find now complete. Meanwhile, we'll race through the tunnel and pick up this influence board. And then we'll keep going and stay on the viaduct. If it'll let me, if I can manage the car. There we go. <laughs> and our turn crunch. There we go. Now we can get off. So I'm actually going to rerun the showcase event. And try and actually win this time. Partly for pride, um, <laughs> to be honest, and partly also because it's credits and it's influence, and I was right there anyway from getting the fast travel board. So I might as well just do it again um, and race back to Edinburgh. There we go, got to get the jump again. Let's see if we can do this a bit better. Oh, that's pretty bad though. We might actually rewind this more if I need to to make sure that I get the win. Oh, it's just, yeah, okay. I'm just going to land on the train or through the train. And yeah, no, let's rewind that a lot <laughs> as much as we can. And hope that we don't have to do the whole thing again because that was just really wobbly through there. Can we go before that penultimate corner, in fact? Because this, this corner back here was really really bad. We just skidded out so much. It's still pretty bad, but we didn't skid as such. Right, let's line this up a bit more straight, shall we? Still a bit shaky. And do we still lose? No, we did win this time. There we go. So we get a bit more influence, 
bit more cash and promote it. So now that we're back in Edinburgh, we may as well pop up and go to the beauty spot, being the Scott Monument. Welcome to Edinburgh, greatest city in the world. Now grab yourself some fish and chips, some salt and sauce, and make yourself at home. It is a nice place, would recommend you can climb up the monument. It's very skinny close to the top though. Alright, we may as well move on to a street race. Since we're here and everything. Which means we're going to go back to a closer view. Now, we just won this RS200. Now, it technically has like snow tires fitted, which, you know, we are on the road. But I figure it is snowing, so maybe it'll help. But then the fact that everyone else has just screamed off ahead makes me think that, okay, maybe this wasn't such a good idea after all. We can at least do that when we go off the road. <laughs> so, alright, maybe that's alright. But I think we're going to struggle a bit. Or we just need to remember to break more for the corners. It is a wheel drive too, so we've got to bear that in mind. Okay, well we, go we should do better than that formula drift bolt at the very least. We're keeping in touch. This guy's in a much better car than us for this sort of thing. Is it a Scari? Oh, it might be. Oh, we managed to get ahead. Can we stay ahead? Basically blocked him on that corner. <laughs> so, hey, it, whatever gets me the win at this point. Nice. So that's unlocked a few more tracks for us to be able to work on. It's also revealed a few more influence boards for us to go back and collect. Crunch. There's a big monument here. There's got to be a board of some description around it, right? Sure enough. I've actually been up this street before. It's the, the fun thing of playing a game like this, set in an area that you are actually familiar with to a little extent. You know what, let's do another cross-country race. We'll take the RS200 on one. And again, we might want to jump into the third-person view to do this properly, but yeah, it's, it's very bouncy when you're in first-person view doing cross-country, funnily enough. And we are against all manner of crazy vehicles. What on the earth is on the roof of that one up there? Now the problem is, is when you get stuck behind someone, they slow you down really badly. I'm gonna hope that we can catch up to everyone. There's a really nice Audi Quattro there. I, I want that car. I think that might be one that you get for higher levels of the dirt racing. The key point is you really need to get a straight line on any of the jumps because otherwise you will twist really badly and it becomes really hard to control your direction. We're like in touch but maybe I needed to drop my pressures even further. I did tune it down a little bit but I think maybe a bit more to make sure that we actually had the grip on the surface. Oh, no, I'm going to rewind that to try and get through here, because it just twitched the wrong way at some point, just completely lost traction. So we couldn't get through here. You can abuse the rewind functionality a lot to try and make sure that you just get perfect corners as much as you can. Honestly worth it when you're first starting out. You know, later on, maybe you want to challenge yourself, maybe you want to turn it off, get a little bit more credit reward for not having rewind enabled at all. But when you're first starting out, just use it, really. Uh, it just makes the grind a lot easier. <laughs> so we came second, that's all right. But it's enough qualified for the spring season. Now it wants you to drive all the way to the festival site again in order to trigger the transition to spring from winter but uh, I'd left myself at the festival last time and when I started the game again it just transitioned to winter so I suspect that the real strat would be to just quit or at least drop back to the main menu and then go back into the game and it'll save you the distance of driving all the way to the festival but as I have mentioned before 
driving around is a really good thing to do early in the game. You can get the opportunity to build up skill points, you discover more places, maybe you uncover some more places for fast travel boards or influence boards. So we're just going to go straight ahead into the middle of the roundabout and no board? No board. Ah, well that's a shame. I fully expected there to be a bonus board there. Maybe too predictable. I do spot a fast travel board up here though. Which we're going to go in as far as this. And crunch. Eight out of fifty. Ah, ah, ah. Anything in the farmhouses? Yes. Another influence board. 3,000 too. Very nice. Oh, once again we find a bridge. And we know by now to just look under every bridge for influence boards. <laughs> it's a little bit of a callback in some ways. We're taking this route because this is the road that we travelled on to get to the Horizon Festival in the first stage. So now we're into spring. I don't actually mind winter, I could have stayed in it longer and just racked up a bit of experience. But while I really enjoy the aesthetic of winter, and it's fun to drive in casually, doing races in winter is not my preferred. Interesting point of difference between 4 and 5 is the category of race that gets presented to you in 4 is pretty much dictated by the car that you're in when you set up the event from the map or from the overworld whereas in five you generally get the option to select your car irrespective of the category that you were currently in and then it sets up the category of the race and the driver tires and stuff based on what you choose at that point which i much prefer because i would have rather done this in a different vehicle not the buggy <laughs> but because that's what i was driving when i selected the race from the overworld that's what I was restricted to but that's all right this this should be fine we're on the road section at the moment which we're not going to do so well on we're going to wash very wide we just need to actually break a lot more I think for these corners and not do that annoying little swish I just am very prone to overcorrecting with the thumbstick sometimes. I think partly because I'm used to a different mechanism of steering where I need to turn the wheel back the other way, like in Truck Simulator. You turn the wheel, and so you have to turn the wheel back the other way, whereas in this you just you turn and then it centers. Whereas the wheel auto centering in truck simulator is a lot slower. I think that's what throws me off. So we're probably going to get second on this one because I don't rate my ability to catch up that amount of a gap onto the guy in front. But that's probably fine. I'm not too worried about farming first places for these. Once we get to the festival playlist content, you do need to win. And that's fine. <laughs> we'll worry about tryharding when we get to that point. For now, I think it's fine to just come second every now and then. You still get a decent amount of credits and influence. And that's our goal at the moment, not just resetting to get first place all the time. So this time we've not made that mistake. We've chosen our Lancia because this is a dirt race, not a cross country race. And that means that half of it is actually on the road. And I'd rather have a proper vehicle, not a buggy. Of course, everyone's overtaking us for some reason. I'm, I'm not quite sure why. I do have off-road tires on, I think, which is not going to serve me well at this point. But once we get up some speed and once we hit the rough stuff, when we eventually do, <laughs> this is a dirt race with not much dirt, gotta say. Lean on him slightly through there. So we've caught up somehow, I'm not, not quite sure how we've managed to just magically catch up all of a sudden when they got such a great head start on me off the line. So the thing is that the, the AI seems to do really well off the starting line, but when it comes to accelerating 
out of corners and stuff, they don't have the same prowess. It's not quite consistent, but whatever. I'm just going to break probably too much for that. Cut the corner as much as it'll let me. And now here should be where we start to come good. Because we have the better wheels or tires for this sort of surface. And now we're back onto the tarmac, which means that we're at disadvantage again, but not for long. So it shouldn't be long enough to matter. And we hold them off and across the line. So another barn find rumor. Uh, we need to go back to the festival or one of our houses actually to collect our previous one. Uh, we could go right and go check that out now. But what we're actually intending on doing here is doing another of the danger signs, which I think we need to take the side path up to the left actually once we get down here. It's kind of off the crossroads. Because one of the things with the festival playlist that we're working towards is that if there are danger signs or other challenges that are requirements for the season, you need to unlock those first before you can do them. So you do need to grind some more of the career options. We don't need to get three stars or anything, probably not going to. Ideally, we'd land all the way down here. We'll see how many stars that is. Only one star. Wow, okay. That's worse than I expected, but never mind. We'll have to come back here with another one. But new events unlocked, so that gives us another close by, so that's good. And then a couple more a bit further away. So we want to get a few more stars. I think if you, as long as you keep getting like one star at a time, you'll keep unlocking more content. The Derwin Reservoir. There's actually a beautiful hiking trail that winds up through the forest and along the shoreline. Long walk though, so it's much faster if you do it in a jag. <laughs> Alright, barn find time, I think. So we could pop the drone out again. Might be easier to look through all of this forest. But otherwise we can just do a little bit of snuffling around manually. Because you've got to drive up to it anyway, so if you do find it in your car, you save yourself a little bit of extra time rather than looking around at the drone first and then driving up to it. Sometimes you can just see a little road or track that isn't marked leading off the side of the road as well. Failing that, we'll just find the largest bit that is away from any roads and... oh, this'll be it. Here we go. In the middle of the trees. Wicked. Audi Sport Quattro. With a siren and everything. People are saying this belonged to... Wait, in the door, are those bullet holes? It's about to say, this uh, bullet holes. Later. Right now, let's get this to the garage. <laughs> I think a few of these are meant to be pop culture references, but I don't get them all. We'll just lock that barn up and... Now let's go home for the first time in a while. So here we can go into our barn finds, and we can see our Escort RS Turbo is ready to collect. You're going to have so much fun in this. It's weird finding one just gathering dust in a barn, actually. Much yeah. more likely to find one parked in a lake or a ditch. So we want to do some more of the danger signs, but first, we do have this drift zone in our way. So we're going to try and at least get a star out of this. Though it's really easier said than done. Especially since this thing, until you get up to the high revs, does not want to spin. Even though it's a rear-wheel drive, it's got really good tyres for this sort of thing, so we've got to get up to a good speed, get the revs up, and then occasionally just hit the e-brake, and then really try not to spin out, which is the hardest part of the whole equation. So we're definitely not going to do well, but if we can get one star, maybe? Yeah, we've got 1500 influence from that. And that qualifies us for the showcase, in fact. And wouldn't you know it, it's kind of in our general vicinity. So first let's try and do this danger sign again and properly. Because for some reason it didn't seem to even count last time. And I'm not sure why. There we go, 144. Two stars, that's not too bad. There's a speed zone here that we're definitely not going to do very well on in this vehicle. But again, if we can just get one star, then it's still progress. 
and will be able to drive through all of the other cars as ghosts if they get in our way. Crunch. There we go, 174, probably only one star, if that. Okay, never mind, it's three stars. That's, that's, okay. Not what I expected, but that levels me up speed zone rank. On to the showcase, and this is one of my favorite intros of it. <laughs> now we get circled by some bikes. They all line up. And we over we go. <laughs> artistic and yes you're right to be getting a bit of deja vu this is in fact one of the first things that you do in the game when we first started All right, guys, this will be easy. Just don't miss the and let's go. yep right down to the voice lines exactly the same thing I think they just ran out of ideas of what to do for the spring showcase to be honest coming up on the quarry and we get the quintessential slow-mo they're all coming in from every side we want to avoid the water if we possibly can because that slows us down more Ooh, so does hitting rocks though unfortunately and then we're going to line up here not hit a tree like we did in our opening video bog down into the water i hate it when you land into a water trap Orange just crashes into purple and takes them both out, so now it's just blue. Yep. And you need to be able to overtake him here, which uh, we didn't. We're not going to run it back immediately because we want to get the credit rewards and the influence rewards rather than let them go to waste. Same as I did with the train. And while we're on our way, there's an influence board up here and also a new house that we can purchase. I don't know if I can afford it. So 350,000 we can afford. I'm not sure if I want to, but you know what? The rubber ducky horn I think does it for me. And we've got our other barn find that we can pick up. Right, so about those holes. The story on Reddit was that this used to belong to a police detective who was involved in multiple shootouts. I'm like 80% sure that nobody died in this car. <laughs> so enjoy, I guess. Well, we'll try and continue that tradition, shall we? What am I missing? Oh, we've got to demolish the... Okay. Now we've got a floating roof. Alright, whatever. That's odd. Okay, well, pro tip. To get that influence board, you have to smash your doghouse, which presumably you can only do once you own the place? I don't know, maybe not. So let's try this again and see if we can win this time so once again we get the slow-mo jump which I think we are actually a bit ahead on this time because they didn't appear to either side of me so that's interesting then we got bogged down the water which we didn't do last time but we also didn't hit the rock so who knows <laughs> and uh, the next jump which again wasn't slow mode. see the blue rider just accelerated mid-air so that goes to show how scripted their movement is. I'm going to cut that corner so we get a nice clear straight run down here, hopefully. I still bog down a bit on the jump. And then we're going to bottom out in the water anyway, so we slow down so badly there. Red down, red down. And we're just going to keep it pinned and hope that we can get a good corner around here and get in front of the blue driver. Looks like I'm the only one just got to take this corner and I think we're in front? Maybe? <laughs> we'll find out. There we go, first place, good. So we've still got quite a lot of influence to get for the Horizon roster, and that's the important thing that we're gunning for. Because we started in summer, then we had to qualify for autumn, qualify for winter, qualify for spring. So now it's all about going back full circle and going into summer again. And then I can't remember how much more there is to do, to still have to do after that for the festival playlist. I think that that's just it though. Now arguably the absolute best thing you could do to really min-max your progression early on is get a map online and 
just get all of the influence boards around. And sometimes the influence boards are just right on the side of the road anyway, so it really doesn't matter. So this is a dirt road speed zone, which means that the Lancia should be pretty good for this. We'll see if we can just get another lucky three stars immediately, or whether this one requires something with a little bit more grunt in it. Maybe we need to pull out the Rally Monster. But if we can keep it accelerated through here, I feel that maybe coming the other direction might be better for this one. This is another good way of getting a lot of influence. This is the RS200 that we got from the Dirt Racing series level up. And we get 5,000 car collection influence, 7,500 skills influence. So that's just, you can see how fast that ticks up. Now we're that much closer. Now we were close enough with that speed zone to three stars. But I feel it's worth a go in the other direction. And with the Rally Monster, so it's a higher rated car. Maybe get a bit better acceleration off the line there. Can we get the average up? Oh, maybe. I can't remember exactly what it was that I needed. It was in the 130s, I think. New PB, I know that. Good enough. One kilometer an hour more to earn three stars. Okay, well, I'm not going to bother doing that now. Psych, I'm totally going to try and do that again now. I feel you get better speed on the downhill run. Oh yeah, huge difference. So you definitely want to be doing this downhill. We'll try again. The other thing I could of course do is upgrade the car to maybe give it some better brakes, maybe some better suspension or something, or just make it faster. I don't know. Uh, but we can try again. The other thing is that I'm getting really close to the amount of influence I need just from the skill points that I'm getting from doing all of this. So <laughs> we might not need to care too much about this right now. Yeah, never mind. I think we need to upgrade the car a bit more. It's it's mid uh, S1. I think we want to max it out to S1. So we're going to shelve that for now. And instead we're going to keep racking up some influence from skill points. So this is another influence board that requires a bit of a jump. But they give you the hill right there to be able to do it. Let's see if we can get this. This is like a 5000 influence board I think. There we go, just like that. Reach level 20. Crunch qualified for Horizon Roster. Meet me at the festival and we'll get you your wristband. A wristband, is that what we get? Turn around when it is safe to do so. And we are straight into the festival playlist, excellent. Okay, so after signing out and back in again, a bunch of stuff has popped up about like Blueprint Rank and Horizon Backstage Pass, which gives you the chance to get some really good cars. The Backstage Passes is what you're working towards in the future uh, once the playlist system goes away. So what we're going to want to make sure we get is stuff like the Rimac is really good. Now, what we can start doing is the important ones are the daily ones because they will expire. That top one, that will disappear after a couple of days. I also noticed I'm glad that I didn't use the backstage pass on a Bugatti Devo, for example, because that's what we're going to win when we get 80% of the season done. And then you've got the monthly rivals. Now you've got all month for this. The Rivals is the easy part, the online adventure is not, because you need to qualify, which I think you need to get to a certain level, so you've just got to work your way through the online content until you're able to qualify for that before you can get on the ranking boards. But you do have all month for that. So first let's just jump into our new Rimac and go hunting some speed zones. So with our emphasis on the daily challenges, we're going to take our new shiny Rimac and take it through this speed zone and even if we only still get the two stars we need to go through it twice regardless because we need four stars i feel the other direction is the better way to go but another two stars is all we need uh take a photo of any rods and custom cars broadway church but i'm not sure i have any rods or customs yet so that's one of the things that you'll have to work on sometimes but that's where the backstage passes might come on me at this point, I'm no longer showing the kind of progress of starting from scratch because I just need to get this done. I'm definitely not going to be showing all of that in video form, but uh, there'll probably be another video coming out later on in the week that rounds up 
all of the progress that we've been making. I'll still be doing a Forza Horizon 5 video this week as well, ideally to continue on with the playlists uh, for the cars and coffee event that's currently going on for that series, but that will be taking a backseat this month as I work through this as a priority. All that and more in future for now. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time.